Hi Megan, I have to film in the bathroom today because the room where I normally film, which is our library, is now Freya's bedroom, and so I have no quiet place to film. So this is my bathroom. This is my uh, my sink. This is this here's my toilet. And that there's my shower, and this here's a bathrobe. These are some necklaces, and this is my lovely face. Okay, there's a now that we've had the tour, let's talk about things. I know this isn't my day to make a video. But I, I'm going to anyway. Maybe this will give you something to respond to since you didn't want to respond to my last one. Um, so, I had to quit smoking because it was messing with my birth control. And I'm pissed. I didn't want to quit at all. And now I'll be like really stressed and I'll be like, Arr, I want to smoke a cigarette, but I can't. Arr. But I'm not a kid person. I'm. <laughs> I am not a, a kid person at all. In fact, I got yelled at today for saying that in front of my cousin. Which I didn't say, I didn't even say I wasn't a kid person. I just said I don't want kids of my own. And I got in so much trouble because I said I'd probably give it up for adoption. Which I, I can kind of understand why I should be upset about that. But, <sighs> I don't know, everyone's all, oh, we you know, you'll want kids eventually. But like, just because I can doesn't mean I have to get off of my uterus. It's been a thing and it bothers me. But anyway, point is I had to quit smoking and I'm pissed about it. Okay, uh, so today I'm talking about books. I've read a lot of feministy books in the past, like however long it's been since I got my tattoo and started focusing on things besides how shitty I felt about my appearance, which I don't anymore, because tattoos are magical and make you feel better, which I didn't know before now. Um, so I read two, I, well, I read one and I'm reading two uh, rather well-known, ooh, excuse me, uh, feminist -y books, and those are The Vagina Monologues by Eve Ensler and, ow, Cunt by Inga Musio. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kind of talk about these aimlessly, I guess, for now, because I don't have much else to do. Let's start with the vagina monologues. I actually performed one of these in a, for my acting class, because I was assigned, we did this whole assignment where we perform what we think is our best monologue, and then someone challenges us with something else that they think would be out of our comfort zone and outside of what we usually do. And someone suggested the vagina monologues to me, because that's really not something I'd... I'd I mean, I've, th I've honestly, I've thought about it before. I'm like, hmm, I could do... I could find one of those and perform that, see see how that goes over. But never did, and always kind of chickened out. And someone suggested it for me, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do it. And uh, the reaction was, for the most part, positive. A lot of people thought it was really good. One person said it was their, like, the best they'd seen from me, something they'd never seen from me before, and they loved it. And a lot of people, you know, thought it was a pretty poignant monologue. It's the one about the woman who won't shave her pubic hair, so her husband has an affair, and the therapist blames her. And, um, it's, a lot of people were like, wow, it was an interesting monologue. You know, it, it you know, it really made sense, and it was really, you know, poignant. And some people focused on the acting, which is good, because they, a lot of them were like, no, you did really well. You, uh, I sat down, which is generally regarded as a weak choice, but it, it worked best for the, the monologue, and some people recognize that. And, I don't know, I got a lot of good feedback, but I got one feedback sheet. They were all written on little half sheets of paper. This boy, of course it's a boy, was like, this monologue is disturbing and messed up, and you just chose it for shock value. And I have been so angry since then. In fact, I confronted him about it, and he's like, "Oh no, I didn't. I didn't mean. I didn't mean you chose it for shock value. I just meant it was. It was a shocking monologue." And I'm like, yeah, "That's not what you said. That's not what you meant at all." And then I was going on like an angry feminist rampage for the rest of the day. And I mentioned something to my friend Callie about how I was on an angry feminist rampage and this kid has the gall to say, yeah, I noticed. And I'm like, not talking to you anymore, fucking douchebag. What is this I'm doing with my head? <laughs> anyway, I was so angry and I, I don't know, it kind of heightened the experience though because it talks in the, in the book about how a lot of people are like, I'm tapping the book in case you was wondering what that sound was. How a lot of people, like, how vagina is, like, 
a taboo thing and commonly regarded as something really gross and dirty when in reality it's a women all chicks have them it's not something to be that weirded out by and I mean I was aware of this and I was aware I'm like yeah you don't really talk about them but I didn't think people had such negative reactions and they do some guys just can't handle it there was a like David Letterman was trying to talk about this book and he couldn't say the word vagina uh my acting teacher had the same problem when he was uh, responding to my monologue, he, uh, would always say, it's a, you know, a, 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 a body part, a, a, you know, that specific part of anatomy, and, like, just stumbled around it, and it was, oh, god, it was kind of eye-opening for me, almost, because I was like, you know, people really are weirded out by vaginas, and the more I think about it, the more I'm like, that makes no sense, I mean, I have a small acting class, but I'm like, you know, it, at that time, you're in the room with at least six vaginas, like, and you're gonna act like they're this, like, disturbing thing to even, like, acknowledge that they exist. I mean, the monologue wasn't that explicit. It was probably one of the least explicit monologues in the whole entire thing. And I don't know, the more I think about it, the more I'm bothered by that. I mean, people talk about penises all the time. Just think about words that are, like, swear words, Swear words that are used for a penis like cock, prick, dick, those are thrown around like nobody's business, but cunt or twat or pussy are all like, ooh, that's a really bad word. And they're soup, like, if you call, I don't know if you've ever called a man a twat or a cunt, it's really fun, but they get really offended, and it's kind of funny. But it's like, why, why, why are you so offended by this? Why are you so offended by a piece of anatomy that half the world has? I don't know, it doesn't really make much sense to me. And uh, on that note, I'll go into my second book, Cunt. The thing is, when I went to buy the vagina monologues for my acting class, that was pre, like, uh, revelations about how cunt negative everyone is, and I, like, I found the only female person working at the bookstore, and I was like, can you bring me to your theater department? And she was like, oh, sure, and walked me over there, and then I whispered, vagina monologues and she's like oh yeah and found it for me like it was super secretive then when I was trying to track this one down because I had heard that it was good and I really wanted to read it I called like I called like I walked into two bookstores both with male tellers and I was like do you have the book cunt c-u-n-t cunt <laughs> and you know weirdly enough neither of them were weirded out by it they were like oh yeah that's a that's a pretty popular one no we don't have it in it usually and then I had to because of that, I had to ask to borrow a guy's phone, and I called two more bookstores and over the phone. Both mail tellers was like, C-U-N-T, cunt, do you have it? And I just, I, I didn't really care much then, and I was kind of like, if you're going to be offended by this, then you're just a weird freak. Um, and I'm only, I'm really not that far into it. I read, it says I'm on page 28, which is pathetic, but I also read, keep in mind, I also read through the preface forward and introduction, and that was a lot. Um, by the way, Vagina Monologues had a foreword by Gloria Steinem, which is amazing, because Gloria Steinem is amazing. Um, this one's really good, too, honestly. Like, it started out with the word cunt, which I've always really liked, because here's a little factoid for you. Uh, cunt comes from a, a bunch of, like, like, a bunch of religions have goddesses with a name like cunt. In fact, one named uh, Kunti, C-U-N-T-I, was a fertility goddess and like it's it was never it wasn't a dirty word until pretty recent times when someone decided to make it offensive to women vagina on the other hand is comes from a latin word meaning a sheath for a sword and i'm like i don't have one of those i anyway and so then it starts to get into the stigma around having a vagina and like getting your period and stuff and i don't know it was it was that, this one's pretty good too. It, um, author talks about when she f first had the, like, period discussion in her, um, health class, and how they said that the pain, the, like, cramp pain is, like, in your, all in your head, and so whenever you're feeling pain, just remember it's all in your head. I am so sure. I used to spend two days straight. I had to stay home from school. I couldn't walk, because I got them in my lower back. It's all in your head. No. And then years later, they're like, oh, wait, research shows that it's real. Because, and then they started marketing painkillers for it. And I'm just kind of like, well, yeah, it's real. God. Anyway, so 
and it's it's a I don't know both of these books are really I like them quite a bit I know it's a weird thing to talk about but I don't know it's I don't really know how to explain it it's like I can't help the anatomy I was born with and what makes penis is so much better and why do people treat those so candidly but they treat vaginas like this thing that it's almost like not people act like it's not a real thing it's like an an idea that like doesn't really isn't anchored to anything and that's just unrealistic so I don't know I don't really know where this whole discussion is going I just wanted to go on a rant about these books because I don't have anyone to rant to because when you start talking about vaginas, people tend to get weirded out, but you, I don't know if you, you're getting weirded out, you very well might be. Anyway, um, I don't know, if you want to talk about a book that has, anyway, both of these books have, like, kind of changed my outlook on a lot of things. I'm actually now, I was going to minor in women's studies, I'm thinking I might just double major in English and women's studies because these things are making me feel so, like, think a lot and get angry a lot and have a lot of but also get like kind of determined over I don't know so you can talk about times you were discriminated against for being female or lies they told you about you know being a female or you could tell me about a book that has like really changed like the way you see things or given you a new like outlook on life or new thing to focus on or new interest or you could even just recommend a book I don't know you can respond to this video in any way you want but I just wanted someone to uh, talk about these books too and I wanted to give you something else to respond to if, if you're interested anyway um, I hope to see you soon and I hope I didn't uh, offend you by my very liberal use of the word cunt which is my favorite word by the way I don't know if you know this but the thing about the fertility goddesses and the whole it's it's a good word and also I just kind of like the way it sounds and I like how offended people get by it when they shouldn't cunt 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 it's say it a bunch of times it's fun um anyway I hope you have a nice evening and I hope to see you soon we still need to make that cheesecake and uh yeah bye